So our first lab that we have here is pretty straightforward. Not overly complicated in terms of chemistry. There's actually really not even much chemistry that we have with it. But what's really important about this te is teaching about proper sort of techniques in lab, uh, obtaining the right number of significant figures with our measurement, and how to think about both precision and accuracy of the work that we do in lab. So let's talk a little bit about the experiment that you are going to be doing. It basically has to do with putting some water in a beaker and measuring the mass of the liquid water that you put in and using very specific volumetric pipettes to deliver a specific volume of water. So again, pipettes are gonna be used to put water into a 50 milliliter beaker. And then you're gonna use uh, a balance to determine the mass of that water. So there's two kinds of water we're going to be using. The first is fresh water, and the second is salt water. So in addition to two different types of water, we're actually going to be measuring two different amounts of water, either a small volume, one milliliter, using a one milliliter, one milliliter volumetric uh, pipette, or 10 milliliters using a 10 milliliter volumetric pipette. And Dr. Brown has a great video out there to show you how to use these different pieces of equipment. So beyond this, you're working with a partner, but you're also gonna find another team to share data with because one group is going to be a freshwater group. And so those two people are gonna be using fresh water and then measuring it at two different volumes. And then a second group is gonna be using salt water, again, measuring it at two different volumes. So in order to have this matrix, if you will, of four data sets, you're going to trade and share data with another set of um, people in the lab. So what are we doing with this data? Why is it important? Well, ultimately, if you know the mass of a substance and you know the volume that that substance is contained in, you can obtain the density because density is a relationship between the mass and the volume of uh, some substance. And so we're going to use the balance to determine the mass of the substance and using these very accurate uh, volumetric pipettes, either one milliliter or 10 milliliter volumetric pipettes, we're going to very accurately determine the volume. So one other quick thing to mention here that we are weighing water on balances. Usually balances are used for weighing solids. So we need to make sure that we're very careful and that if there is a spill, if there's any water on the outside of your beaker or if it spills onto the balance, that it's cleaned up right away. Don't hesitate to reach out to your instructor if you need some help making sure that it's cleaned up properly. Okay, so that's the experiment that's going to be done. Uh, Dr. Brown, as, as I mentioned, has a great video out there to make sure you can see the different pieces of equipment that you'll be using in lab. But beyond that, there's two kinds of things we're gonna be thinking about when we analyze this data. The first is thinking about two terms, precision and accuracy. So I like to think about this great bullseye analogy when we think about what it means to be precise versus accurate. Said another way, when I think about precision, I think about how close your measurements are to each other. So if we look at measurements within these four experiments, here represents measurements that are precise, they're close to one another, and here represents measurements that are precise, but close to one another. When we think about accuracy though, accuracy represents how close your measurements are to the truth, what the answer is supposed to be. So again, with this first scenario, we can see that those those data points were fairly precise, right? They were close to each other, but they weren't accurate. And accuracy in this case representing the bullseye. In our best case scenario, we're gonna be able to be both precise and accurate with our measurements. But when we think about accuracy, this is I think an interesting sort of scenario to think about. Sometimes if your data is not precise, the data points aren't close to each other. But that's why we take multiple data points because we can average them. And ideally the average is going to be close to the truth. So in this case, even though the data wasn't precise, it's fairly accurate because on average, we're going to be hitting the center of the bullseye. This is the worst case scenario. We're neither precise nor accurate with our data. And we can see that not only is our data not close to one another, but on average, it's not going to hit the bullseye. 
So that's our least desired scenario. So be able to think about precision and accuracy. You have a lot of control over your precision because that's how diligent you are with making sure to do proper technique and all of that. And the better you get in the lab, the more precise your data is going to be. Sometimes there may be something that's faulty with a piece of equipment that can allow it to skew one way or the other. A great example that I like to think about with this is let's say you have a scale at home that you know weighs five pounds heavy. So you know when you get on that scale, whatever your weight is, you know it's not accurate, but you can actually mentally subtract off that five pounds to get what your accurate data is, what your accurate weight is. So we can think about that sometimes as being what we call a systematic error. It kind of systematically skews in one direction. And we can control and correct for that. Random error, much more difficult to sort of correct. So one of your post lab questions is going to ask you to think about different types of error that you might encounter in this experiment. So the last thing to think about is actually doing a calculation with your data to calculate the percent relative uncertainty. So as you can imagine, uncertainty is something that we don't want in our data. We'd like to know that we're certain about the accuracy and the precision of our data. So here's a little equation that can help us think about how to calculate uncertainty. And it's really a ratio of two parameters. The first is the tolerance of the equipment that you're using. So two pieces of equipment that we're using are a balance and then two uh, sizes of volumetric pipettes. And then the magnitude of the measurement. How big of something are you measuring? And again, because this is a percent, we just simply multiply this ratio by 100. So when we think about the tolerances that we have, these are reported in your lab handout. For each of the pipettes, there is a tolerance. For example, the small pipette can weigh 1.00 milliliters plus or minus 0 0.006 milliliters. On the other hand, and I probably should have another zero right in here so that it sort of matches here, 1.000 because we can see I've got three decimal places that are right here, and then we've got three that are there. So we've got uh, uh, a tolerance that's listed for both of these volumetric pipettes, and then this is the tolerance that's listed for the balance. Okay? So if we're thinking about what this means, right? the best case scenario is then when we have small uncertainty. So one thing that's going to be an important skill to be able to think about is when we have ratios between things. For example, if we want small uncertainty, that can happen in one of two ways or the combination of both of them. We can have a fairly small degree of uncertainty meaning large certainty, if we have a small numerator, that is we have a small tolerance, that means we're going to know that accuracy fairly, um, uh, fair, with fair, a high degree of accuracy, or we can have a large denominator. We can have a large measurement. The larger your measurement is, the smaller this, this uncertainty, this tolerance kind of is in terms of that part over whole. So you're going to actually take your data and plug it in here to think about calculating the uncertainty of your measurements. So that's pretty much it. It's not an overly complicated lab experimentally. It kind of gets your feet wet or your hands wet in the lab as we're working with some water here. But it's an important sort of uh, entryway into having us think about how to obtain data, how to think about the accuracy and precision of data, and very importantly, how to think about obtaining data with the correct number of significant figures. So have fun!